Meat City, baby. Hello and welcome back to Meat City Gaming. JD here with another episode of Kicking Aces here in World of Tanks. And today we are rolling out in the Lycan. This is a tier seven American light tank and it's basically a reskin of the T-71. It was, I think, one of the first Halloween events. It was one of the options in that very first Halloween event. And in the Halloween event, I think it was very good, but it is also really, really good in the standard game mode. I'm trying to remember, I think they weren't available in the regular game mode for a while, and then maybe they got added. I could be remembering that wrong. That is many years ago at this point. But the tank is available right now if you have it from uh, unlocking during one of the Halloween events or from some other method in standard play, and it is super good. Uh, it's a light tank, so it has all the benefits of a good light tank. Very mobile, sneaky, good view range, all that. And on top of that, it has an amazing gun. It is a six round autoloader, and it does 150 average damage per shot, which comes out to uh, 900 average damage per clip. I couldn't believe it. I was sure the average damage on this tank was less. I thought it was in the 135 range, but I looked it up. It is 150 per shot times six shots. So 900 average damage in a clip, and the clip reloads really fast. It is, you would think, for 900 damage in a tier seven light tank, you'd have to wait, you know, bat chat levels, but no, it is really, really quick to reload. I think it's around 20 seconds, 22, depending on your loadout and crew skills and all that. So this tank has it all. I, I mean, other than armor, which no light tank really is gonna give you armor, uh, it's got everything else that you could possibly want. So we are in an encounter battle on the Heilbrand map, and I don't play a lot of light tanks. Uh, it's not typically the style that I enjoy, or I should say mostly it's missions. I, I've been doing a lot of missions and tank unlocks and things like that, and they've been steering me more towards medium and heavy tanks uh, rather than the light tanks. Light tanks can be fun, but typically you're playing a bit of more of a passive role. You're just trying to light stuff up, and boy, I have a hard time getting my, my teammates to shoot at the enemy tanks that I am lighting up. So uh, for this battle, we're in the Lycan. I found a nice little spot here. Uh, there was a uh, an enemy light tank, the EBR Hotchkiss, that was pushing early, really hard to hit, but we put a few shots into him. He got overly aggressive and got taken out. And you can see from here, we also have some shots down into the town if the enemy is pushing kind of on that first level in. If they're all the way on the back row, you won't be able to see them. But if they're kind of in that midpoint, you can get some shots down some of those alleys, although they are very limited. It looks like all my opportunities have dried up. The battle's going pretty well. We're up two tanks, so I decided to push out and move and try and use some of my speed to flank and support and pick off enemies that are kind of separated from the herd and grab some of the stragglers. So before I went on this adventure, I did switch over and reload a premium clip. Uh, I do carry two premium clip rounds in this tank uh, for when you go up against heavy tanks, well-armored tanks. As a tier seven light tank, you can see tier nine heavies. I don't think you can see tier 10. Uh, you used to be able to back in the day. I'm not quite sure how the matchmaking uh, is at this given moment in terms of light tanks. Can they get plus three sometimes? I don't think so, but I know definitely at one point they could. Regardless, as you can see, even now we're shooting at just an IS, a tier seven Russian heavy tank, and that's a well-armored tank, but it's just a tier seven premium clip loaded, and we're having trouble going through. A couple go in, a couple module damages, we take the tracks off, and I think we get one into the side there. But you can see the penetration, even on these premium rounds, will struggle a bit if you're going up against a hard target. So uh, we dumped that first clip, uh, tried to put a little damage in, and I realized that is not a good position to be. There's a Borask up top on Overwatch, the IS is kind of down sitting and looking. I think there's another tank up near the cap circle. So I'm gonna pull out, reverse, again, use the mobility. Uh, we can disengage and get away. So why not do so when we're in a bad situation? And I've been putting this off. The, uh, the as you can hear in the background, the base has been under uh, the st status of being captured for the last three, three and a half minutes or so. And now it is becoming a problem, 30 seconds left. So we load our last premium clip. And what I wanna do is go wide and then come up hopefully behind because this map is weird. It has a backside of the mountain where you can just sit and cap and not be up on top there. So we come around the, the, the skidoop there 
and we see a chi ri two shots in uh, to take him out the first one set him on fire and there we go there is the sta2 sitting on that little embankment again there's nowhere that you can see this guy other than from your own base or their own base if you're up on top you won't see him if you go to either flank you won't see him i had to get all the way around behind and with nine seconds left we were able to put in a shot to reset the uh, the timer and the capture so all good but we also spent our entire clip and i think two or three of those shots missed went into rocks so not my best marksman moment but we did hit the one that counted uh to reset the timer so We've got our clip reloaded, we're going in here, and again, you can see that was a pretty quick engagement. We're trading, we're putting in six shots. That was our last one, and oh, we leave him on 193 health. So yeah, that's two more shots that we need to put in, and we're gonna go for a reload here. Now, thankfully, we are much more mobile than the STA-2, so we can use these hills, stay out of line of sight. There he is, and now he shoots, so I'm gonna get down under his gun. I'm just about reloaded, we're gonna pop up. I'm looking like I'm going left. We're going to turn right. And again, he's got this elevation change. Hard to do. He puts his shot into the mountain. We come down, slide around. First shot in. Second shot secures the kill. And good. We secured the base. We prevented the capture. But all said and done, that little blitz of a movement. And now we're down two tanks. It's four to six. When we started this run, we were up 12 to 10. And now all of a sudden, we're down four to six. So uh, we were putting in some good work and doing some good things there for the team. But not quite enough to prevent... A, uh, a good situation turning into a bad one. So we're gonna have to dig in and do a little bit of work here to try and pull this one back. Thankfully, this is a good situation. The Yag Panther 2 was looking off in the other direction. We were fully loaded, first shot missed. I did try to do an auto aim snapshot, no luck. Took our time then, second one aimed in, got the side of the tank and eliminated him. And now we're down to four to four. Thankfully, one of my allies also pulled back a kill. So going for a reload and we know there's two tanks still in that town area. Uh, to the west so there's two tanks there and all my allies are to the east so i decide i'm gonna also go east and try and overwhelm the enemy there make it at four on two and leave the other two for cleanup at the end we come around and we see there's a tiger p we do take a shot but we put in two and take him out and so now two tanks behind us and i think there's one up here somewhere where is he we're gonna see him here in just a minute we are spotted so they can see us there it is it's a barask he takes a shot so we know that tank only has two uh, rounds in its auto loader so at most it has one shot left the uh the friendly tank here gets a shot in and i'm going to decide to do a drive-by auto aim and ah we get lucky there we get rewarded um with a little bit of goodness from the rng to take out that barask and now it is a four on two and now it's a three on two so the enemy two tanks did get one of the kill or the brass was it the brass that got a kill one of them got a kill there so now we have Three friendly tanks left, and we're all kind of together, which is what you want. We don't want to let them pick us off, but we know the two enemy tanks are in relatively the same area as well. So we don't know what they are. We don't know what their health situation is. So we're going to try and get ourselves into a position to do something here. And my ally goes up and starts to capture the base. And there we see the tank destroyer that's left is the Diamondback. I think that's a British tank destroyer. And I do know it is very well armored from the front. We do not want to get engaged in a head-on battle with that tank. So I'm thinking for a second, should I come up here and jump in and jump in the base and make the double uh, capture timer? I don't think so because the Diamondback's getting close. It's gonna get here in time and then it's gonna come up and it's gonna be able to face both me and my ally. So instead, I know that tank doesn't have a turret. So I back off, get down below the hill, break line of sight, and I decide I'm gonna go for a flank here. I know he's gonna go up and try to stop the capture. So when he does, he's gonna come up the hill and turn away from me towards the cap circle just like that and now we've got his side he has no turret boom first shot goes in and we get an ammo rack damage that's great two shots go in three shots go in our, our friendly uh, ally comes over puts one in and we just need one last little bit of damage to finish off the diamondback and now it is a three on one and the last tank left i think it is uh it's a heavy tank and it's got a weird name is it an eradicator yeah uh, one that i'm not too familiar with but he's only at 348 health Unfortunately, I used up almost my entire clip there. I think I had one left, so I went for the reload. I decided to flank. Again, I know he's gonna come around and go to the base, so I figured I'll go around behind. We'll create that pincer, but as we can see, it was not needed. The GSOR on our team finishes off the Eradicator, and we pull that victory back at the last minute. So a, a fun, interesting battle in a tank that I don't get to play a whole lot, and it seemed to go pretty well. We got into spots early and often. We kept our gun engaged. We uh, helped push on a flank and try and secure some kills. And then we were still able to use the mobility of our tank to relocate, 
reset that base capture at the last possible moment to get all of those base defender points. That wasn't the intent, but uh, thankfully we got there just in time. So we also got that, uh, that defender medal. And in the end, had the, uh, the teamwork and the coordination to work with our allies. We didn't go hunting on our own. We didn't try to clean up tanks on our own. We went as a wolf pack, hunted with our allies, used the spacing and flanking maneuvers to pick off those enemy tanks one by one while we stayed in a coordinated group and we were able to turn that tide when we were a couple tanks down there in the late stages of the game. And that led to a really, really nice performance result. Six kills, a top gun, 3,694 damage in a tier seven light tank is amazing for an XP total that I have not seen before or at least in a very long time, 2,271 XP. That is a bonkers number for me anyway. Um, I was blown away when I saw that XP total. So taking a quick look at the detailed stats, we can see six kills, 3,694 damage, a little bit of assistance on top of that with 319 assistance. So we got over 4,000 combined damage there, a couple of detections, and all that results in just shy of 50,000 silver with a premium account, again, that's firing all 12 of our premium rounds. It would have been a much more lucrative game if we did not fire those rounds. And I think uh, half of them were okay, or less than half. And the, you know, we shot that full clip at the IS, which did almost nothing. So that definitely dipped into our profitability for a stellar round like this. Taking a look at the medal page, yes, we are rewarded, thankfully, with the ace tanker. If you clear 2,000 base XP and don't get an ace tanker, I don't know what to tell you, that, that must be an impossible tank to ace. Yes, that was enough, a great game, well-deserved ace tanker. Uh, to go along with some other really interesting medals, we did get the top gun for the six kills. As I mentioned, the defender medal for almost an entire 100 base capture points that we stole away at the last second. Uh, an arsonist, we did set the uh, the Chiri, I believe it was, on fire as we made that push to interrupt the cap circle. Uh, and a couple of other standard medals. I think there's a, a duelist in there and there's a bruiser, master gunner for some accuracy, uh, some other medals that are more common to go with the, the special ones that we earned in that fight. Taking a look at the team statistic page, we are going to give a shout out to Tana MT007 in the GSOR uh, 1008. That is the tank that was working with us there at the very end of the battle uh, in the cap circle to clean up those last two kills for sure. And they had many other contributions throughout the fight. As we can see, four kills from them, 4,632 damage. That's just a crazy total. They had a really, really good game, 1,677 base XP, which normally will get you an MVP in almost every single game. Unfortunately, uh, they were up against me with my light tank getting kind of that boosted XP shooting at some big heavy tanks, doing uh, some higher tier tanks, doing a lot of damage. Uh, it was enough for me to boost past them, but great game between the two of us, 10 of the 15 kills for our team. So shout out to them. And as we can see, uh, a really nice performance there for myself, 2,271 XP is one that I'm certainly proud of and will remember for quite a while. So that's going to wrap this one up. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.